today I'll be talking about placeholders and how you can validate them and also how you can apply universal stylings across your whole tkinter program. So first of all, I'll just run this, run this test. So as you can see, a frame has just popped up with three entry boxes filled with placeholders. So the placeholders are called number, time, and character. And each of these placeholders are validated. So the number one is obviously validated for only numbers, times only for time, and, and then characters is for only characters, so no numbers. First of all, I'll, I'll give you a little demo of how it works. So right now, I'm going to enter a, B, C, D, nothing's happening. But if I try to enter in any numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's fine there. The time. The time will allow me to enter only a time and stop at, and won't, won't let me put in anything else. So if I say 12, 15, and then try to enter in some numbers, won't work. Or try to enter any numbers after saying 12, 15, won't work. And then the character. So the character only allows characters, so A, B, C, D, but no, but no, no numbers right now. So one, two, three, four, not working. As you can see with these placeholders, is that once you click off them, they they still put the placeholder back in, which is a nice active feature. And placeholders have a lot of advantages when when using them. So for example, you don't need a little uh, string or label beside them telling them what to enter in so it saves a lot of space and you can also do cool things like what i'm going to show you so i'm going to talk about how the class works so this this class takes in three things where it's going to be placed what's the placeholder and also the validation as you can see the container is where it's going to be placed the placeholder and also the validation is going to use these are just these are just also um, arguments that you need to declare a Python constructor. So the self dot placeholder just sets the variable placeholder to the placeholder. So it's pretty self explanatory. Insert. So this insert is inserting an empty, an empty TTK entry box. Whoops. With the placeholder, the con this is configuring. So validate key means that. It, the key will the the method validate takes in every single keystroke. So this is an active it's an active validation. So with previous validations, you'd have to press um like enter in what's wrong. So for example, if I could enter in A B C D E F G in this and then press enter, then it would tell me. But this is an active type of validation. So it just it doesn't allow me to enter in anything else. So this is why it, it needs key. Then the character validation and then it tells you what type it's gonna use. So I'll 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 talk about that later. So this is also binding to the the T T K entry box. Um the method clear placeholder and this is when you when you click on it. So as as the method name is pretty self-explanatory, when you click on it, it creates a placeholder. When you click off of it, it adds the placeholder, as seen below there. So clear clear placeholder. So when you click on it, it runs this program, it deletes it, adds the validation, and it knows which validation to already add, and then adds the styling to it, which I'll talk about later. So, and then the add placeholder, this is a bit weird. Um, so to add it back, you have to actually remove the validation and then place the placeholder back in because um, this placeholder, called no, which has the placeholder number, won't actually let me place the placeholder back in if it still has validation on it because number, the string, the string number obviously isn't actually an integer or a number in Python. So you actually have to remove it and then insert, back, insert it back in. So the add validation. So the add validation takes in the self validation that was mentioned up here, where you declare the placeholder, and it checks with if statements. So if it's a if you requested a character none, which doesn't validate the placeholder at all, time and number. Um, each each of these with or have a key. So the key validates whenever any keystroke changes the widget's content. So this is, like I said, an active validation. And then 
these will actually call the number validations which are registered to the root. So since these are registered to the registered to the root, this will work over the whole the whole tkint tk program. However, you can register these to specific frames or anything like that. I'll mention how these work later. So as you can see, a uh, number time each call a different type of validation. Also, you can also add um add a censorship. Show if it's a password. You can show this for for the placeholders. <clears throat> so how the so how the validation actually works. So the root register, uh, the registers take every keystroke the the person enters and then checks it with the function it's calling so it's an active type of thing which it doesn't actually take uh, much cpu usage as uh, you may think so it's fine to use so for example character validation so each time i enter something in character validation the root register calls this program to check if it's okay and if it doesn't it it stops me from actually uh entering it into the text box so the character validation so it takes p and then it sends it see it uses is alpha which checks if it's <clears throat> which checks if it's a character and if it is return true and that will allow it to you to actually be placed inside the placeholder and also checks for spaces so right now i can't actually press I actually can't press the space bar or enter any any spaces in, which uh, which could be bad if you wanna enter in a first name, for example. Or, I mean, a full name. Um, for number validation, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's the same thing. So it's digit and checks for spaces, and then for time. So this splits the text up with a colon. So parts number. So it makes sure that it makes sure that the parts or the numbers that is, have been entered is less than two, which is which is zero one. So the order goes zero one. So it makes sure. Oh oh sorry. Oh, I that out. Barry just cut there. Um, so this actually checks once you get to this stage. So it's uh, the time is twelve twelve that you can't enter anything else. So it checks if um, is anything a decimal or anything like that. So decimals and uh, and yeah. So that's basically how this class works. It'll be in the description of this video and now I'll be talking about how the roots and how I've got so these are not typical tkint entry boxes these are called ttk dot entry boxes so these and my frame is actually ttk dot frame so and the root is theme dot theme tk so these are these are kind of a they're auto themed so the theme I'm using is here and there's multiple themes you can use. So with here, you can you can use this theme or that theme or any theme. But the cool thing is you don't have to since you've since you've declared what theme you're going to use. You don't actually need to declare or oh, the background of this entry or the background of this frame. It automatically takes the theme because the theme already has set colors and backgrounds and fonts for everything. So I didn't have to set this to have rounded corners or a black background with white text or anything like that so it's a it's a pretty good utility to use so overall this 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 is a pretty useful this is a pretty useful class if if you want some validation and you don't want to deal with this is, a, this is more of a this is more of a one solution type of thing however there's some caveats for example if you want to do a full name with spaces you have to obviously make another one with only only string maybe or something like that 